It's the Afrozone Show and this is How Far. How Far now, what's up, what's going on? How you all doing? Hope you all keeping safe. Okay, I already read his accolades, guys, yeah? But my guest today is a musical genius, an intellect, an activist, Chicago's own, a hip-hop artist, but of African descent as well. So yeah, our, one of ours, one of ours. I'm talking about Vic Mensa. Vic, what's up? How far now? Charlie, everything blessed. Everything cool. <laughs> I'm so glad to finally meet you. We've been I on the know. phone, but we never met in person. I appreciate so, you so honor. much, man. The pleasure is mine. Thank you. So let's go all the way back to 2008, because I know you've been doing this huh, forever. But I want to start from 2008, just for the AfroZones audience. You know, the show is in 44 African countries. Mm, amazing. All right? The show is also nationally syndicated here in the United States. All right, the only Afrobeat show that's uh, Trailblazing. in the U.S. You know how we do? You Indeed. know how we do? It's a movement. It's a movement. But it reminds me of the movement that you started in 2008. Save Money. You put Save Money together in 2008. And as far as I was concerned, it was like you had a collective of like minds, you know, mm. who were creatives, musical geniuses, all young, all fresh from Shy Town. And uh, you all were trendsetters, influencers. I'd like to say that, right? <laughs> so what was that? What was the story behind? What was the movement for? I know what my movement is about Afrobeats. Mm. But what was that movement for? Was it an empowering thing? Or was it something you guys wanted to have a label in the future or what? Save Money was really just like a, an antithesis to your typical hip hop bullshit, mm. you know, and, um, and, and a way for us to express ourselves. And it begins as a friendship before being music, or, you know, entertainment, anything like that, you know. So it's like when we were 14 years old, 15 years old, about freshmen in high school mm. and only person rapping was probably me, me and Chance. Mm -hmm. We were the first people rapping, you know what I mean? We first started recording together around that time. It's really just, you know, just just friends. And also we used to steal a lot. <laughs> you know, Up so to we, no good? Yeah, so we were saving, we were saving money, you know what I mean? Um, and in time though, you know, people's talent started to manifest. And, you know, I think that talented people bring talent out of each other, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, and that, that's what I saw happen with our collective. Okay. So all of you, would, would you say today now, 2021, would you say yourself, Chance the Rapper and some of the other guys, are you all still cool? Yeah, still yeah, we locked in. One another? Fully rocking. Good, yeah. good. Okay, let's go back to the music. So in 2014, right, uh, you had your debut, Down On My Lock, and then you had that beautiful, beautiful track that was mind-blowing with Kanye, you mad? Mm -hmm. Then you go sign to Rock Nation. These are all power moves for a kid. Because you were quite young when all this right. was happening, yeah, right? Yeah. Are there any life lessons that you think that you wish you knew at that time when the fame, mm. the fortune yeah. came to such a young kid? Right. You know? Yeah, you Do you know. mind me saying a young, I'm going to say the African way, young biracial kid. Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Just don't call me your brown name. <laughs> no, you're all good. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> stop it. I ain't going to call you when you go, no, baby. Black. <laughs> Come uh, on, tell me. Man, you know, if I if I could uh, impart some wisdom upon my upon myself at that time, I yeah. would say, um, don't let the lights blind you. You know, from what's important, family, and you know the relationships that um, are longer standing that come before this. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. when you get money for the first time, invariably. It makes an exact crazy, yes. <laughs> you know. You add in being crazy from the jump. I'm Gemini, so you know I'm, I'm crazy by nature. You know what I'm saying? But I but I love hard. I love my people. You know what I'm saying? And mm. and um, when, when I was young like that, you know, I I end up butting heads with my friends. You know what I mean? People that really that I love and people that matter more than this bullshit to me because my ego was so involved. Because I'm like I'm getting money for the first time. You know, and um, and I, I would just pass on to my younger self or to somebody in that position. Don't let that shit blind you. It really ain't about shit. Money comes, money goes. You know what I mean? But but love is real. You know what I mean? And focus on that. Hold on to that. I like that. I like that. Your records are very diverse. You're a very diverse, you know, like I said, multi-talented individual. I'm talking about records, you know, with likes of Skrillex all the way to Wycliffe Jean. 
all the way to Pharrell Williams. Then a collaboration again with Wyclef Jean and your boy Chance the Rapper, which was Shelter. It was like mind blowing for me. It was like Chicago meet New York, meet Haiti, meet Africa. Mm. You know, that's how deep he was for me. So what's the story behind that collaboration? Wyclef is one of my favorite artists. Wyclef is somebody who has inspired me since I was yay high. Yeah. And uh, whose music has meant a lot to me in times in my life when I needed that, I needed support. And so I was able to make a song with him that can be that for somebody else. You know, when I started making music, mm -hmm. I wanted to impact people in the way that the likes of Wyclef and Tupac and Nas impacted me and Common. You know, Common is my favorite rapper. Mm -hmm. And there were points in my life when I was a kid, you know, but I'd be going through whatever I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And I might just put on Common and just lay on the ground and just like, you know, Common and Lauryn Hill retrospect for life. Mm -hmm. And just lay on the ground and just listen to it. And, you know, he's talking about how he had to have an abortion and, I ain't got nobody <laughs> pregnant, you know, but I, I got whatever I got going on. Right, right. <laughs> and I felt that, you know, yeah. and, it, and, it, and it played a part of my life for real. And um, so I feel like that's what the song Shelter with Wyclef is, is I know that for somebody that's, you know, you know, 12 years old, 13 years old, high school, the way I was listening to that music, that they could listen to this and it'll play a part in their life. Yes, real mind blowing, like I said. In the, I mean, during the pandemic, you released um, the V tape, mm. and you just recently announced that you're about to release the I tape. Yeah. So, which part of your story? Because you're known for storytelling, although you rap, you know. But I think you talk about your experience, you talk about life, you talk about you know things that this generation can relate to, right? So, what should we expect from the I tape? What part of Vic Mensa's story would you be telling them? It's a lot of storytelling on the I tape. Really, um, it's largely about freedom. You know what I mean? So I'm telling a lot of stories about incarceration and people that are close to me that are locked up. Um, when I was in Ghana recently, I was, um, you know, I was just struck by the fact that people live with an entirely different set of circumstances. Like, although we have access that doesn't exist over there, they also don't grow up losing their brothers and cousins and fathers to 45 years prison sentences. You know, I'm, I was talking to Stoneboy about this when we were shooting a video. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he was saying a prison in Ghana is a terrible place too. You don't want to be there because it's, it's off the map. You know what I mean? They can do whatever they want, but yes. still it's not like everyone you know knows Somebody. family members that are in prison for long, you know, long sentences. Um, and I'm telling a lot of those stories on the eye tape. And, it, and it's, you know, within the context of my own personal experience, you know, but over the past year, um, those relationships have been um, very significant to me in that I think all of us have been forced to face ourselves um, and feel a degree of confinement, you know, uh, not being able to go out to eat or not yeah. being able to go to the bar for you, not being able to go to the studio, probably yeah. having to work from the crib. Sure, um, and so while I'm talking to these guys that, well, this is their reality for the next 15 years. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's magnified. It just gave me a window into what I have going on and what we all got going on through the lens of like, you know, the, of the freedom that I have, you know, and the, and the freedom that is taken from us as a people. So that's a lot of what I'm talking about in the I tape. I'm looking forward to it. Don't. Looking forward to it. You also mentioned your trip to Africa. So let's, let's, let's go back to the motherland a bit. You know, recently you went home to Africa. How we, a lot of people don't know you of any heritage. Do you know that? You know, I feel I like mean, it's the like, name, yeah. you know, and, but. And also because you are Chicago. You are Chicago, you are an American rapper first. I mean, it oh, is for, what it is, yeah, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it is what it is, and that's how you grew up. So how important is it for you that we know who you are? How important is it for you to connect with your heritage, with Africa? Uh, it's, 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 it, yeah, it's so important. You know, actually, on the odd tape, I have a, I have a skit that is um, my father telling, you know, kind of his life story, you know, how he was born in a slum in, in 
the Eastern region of Ghana. And, you know, through education and came to Chicago in maybe the early 80s, you know, mm -hmm. and it was cracking then, you know. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about being on 63rd Street in the <laughs> 90s, you know. Um, and, and um, yeah, you know, I'm giving those windows because uh, one thing that I, I, I was faced with that I realized when I was in Ghana this time is how important it is for me to prioritize um, my presence in Africa, in Ghana, you know what I mean? And how privileged above all, you know what I mean? I am to have that direct link to my descendants. You know what I mean? To, I mean to my, uh, to my ancestry. You know, because being Black American, it's like niggas don't know where they're from. James Baldwin has a quote where he says, "Know from whence you came. If you know whence you came, there are absolutely no limitations to where you can go." But the reality is that Black Americans have been stripped of that that heritage that you and I have, yeah. you know? Yeah. And um, I just realized how lucky I am for that, you know what I mean? And, and so I appreciate you for helping me, you know, go in that direction where I need to be. I'm glad, I'm glad. But you know, I also want to thank you as well because I felt like your trip, uh, your trip was very, it was like an album. Every single day, you you took Chicago with you. You took your fans with you, not just the Chicago fans. You took America with you. Every day, I was even in Lagos at that time, but I'm on your page. I'm looking to see what regalia you're wearing, from the whole regalia to your slippers to everything. Like you I got the jalabi, the movement, the jalabi you know. everything, you know. I had the and camera with me. I was having a lot of you fun. You documented everything. But most, and most important, you decided to mess with the music. Yeah, so you did, you met, you did stuff with Stoneboy. And of course, now we manifest. So, was that one of the was that your was that your plan to go home and then incorporate Afrobeats into hip hop? One hundred percent. You know that that was definitely my intent. Um, the trip, you know, had a lot of different significances for me. But there was a point in time last year when I just started feeling like a, I started feeling like a calling, you know, mm -hmm. um, from what feels like, felt like my ancestors, you know? I believe in communication with my ancestors. I speak to them when I meditate, when I pray, you know, I'm talking to my grandma, I'm talking to my great, great, great grandfather. Um, and, you know, I felt like they were telling me, come home, you know, we we can help you. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And- um, Bless you. 100%. Mm -hmm. And that we're here, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're present. Um, and so that was like the genesis of my trip. Um, but I think that's that's just leading me to realize that relationship needs to be cultivated. Because when I got there, what I think I took most was um, how valuable collaboration is. You know, how valuable collaboration between us on this side and us on that side that's what is. Makes great. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's the conversation I've been having with Stoneboy, with Sarko mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With Manifest, it's like, building that bridge i actually just did um i just did a ted talk for ted x accra Ooh, nice. and the subject of of my speech was the reuniting of the continent with black americans with the diaspora at large but i was speaking from an american perspective okay. because i don't know as much about europe and the caribbean but at the end of the day it's like you know i, I came across so much information mm -hmm. you know like by, the, by 2050, a quarter of the world's population is going to be African. You know, the connectivity is stronger than ever before. So the, the potential with our collaboration um, is limitless. So I'm telling, I'm telling all the guys, everybody in America, everybody I, everybody I speak to, I'm like, yo, next trip, you take a trip, yeah. go to Africa. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we're conditioned in America to think that it's like, an impossible feat, you know what I mean, to get to Africa. People go to Europe, people go to South America, um, Jamaica, go to the Caribbean, Africa, everything America. way before they go to Africa. But it's like, yo, literally, my round trip ticket to Ghana in, at Christmas was $900, you know? The cost of living there is dr dramatically lower than here, you know what I mean? I could go to LA and, uh, and be in LA for a week, staying in a hotel or Airbnb and 
spend as much bread as I spend in a yes. month and yeah. kind of like we could do it. You know, you don't have to be you don't have to be paid up, like have a whole bunch of money. Yo, Stimmy could take you to Africa. <laughs> I ain't even going to hold you like yeah. yo, Stimmy could get you sitchy <laughs> for a trip to Ghana or Nigeria. Facts. All truth. Facts. You know what? Do you think? Yeah. I mean, now that, you, now that we just talked about this, let's, let's, let's address the elephant in the room. You know, and I think you're the best person to actually answer this. Do you think there's a disconnect with Africans and African-Americans? I know we ask this question a lot, but deep down, do you think there's a disconnect? And if you do think there's a disconnect, just give me one, one way you think we can bridge it besides all the other things you said. Oh yeah, there is a disconnect, a thousand percent, you know, by design, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, the, it's a tool of white supremacy is probably the most powerful tool yes, is right. to keep us fragmented. You know what I'm saying? I like to look at Africa and the diaspora as one body, you know, and if we in America and Britain, if we're the limbs, you know what I'm saying? Reaching across the globe, then the continent is the skeleton and every system in the body can function within itself, but without a skeletal system, it all collapses. Yeah. And we haven't been moving like one body because we aren't realizing how connected we really are, you know? And I think that we bridge that gap and and build that connection by collaboration, you know, and by visiting, you know, and building infrastructure and business. I have a program that I'm working on to bring kids from Chicago, you know, to, to Ghana I'm and in. Nigeria. I would love to <laughs> talk to you about that. I'm in, definitely. You know, because yeah. I, and I want to do it right around that age, freshman in high school, 14, 15, when it's yes. like you can make a decision to drop out of school and just For play the block, years. you yes. know, or you could focus on something. And I think that showing these kids, you know, mm -hmm. that the world is so much bigger than the South Side or the West Side, um, can, can change their lives because there's kids that ain't never been downtown let alone been to a place where everyone you see on a billboard is black the president is black and it's not a novelty item yes. you know what i mean like africa's got its issues but we're like fish out of water over here you know what i mean mm -hmm. you just looking at the media and everything you see doesn't represent you it makes you yeah. you feel like a constant other so you feel anti you know but so I, I want to chop it up with you about doing that. I think that's great. For me, I think it's all about education as well. Like you said, the collaboration by education. Mm -hmm. I feel like Africans should be taught more about uh, African-American history. And I think that uh, uh, African-Americans should be taught more about, about African African history. history. Yes. <laughs> this is, I mean, literally, this is I everything think. I was just talking about yeah. in, in my TED talk, man. It's like the, uh, the extent that African history exists for black Americans in school, African history begins with slavery and ends with the civil rights movement. That's all you hear about when it comes to African people, you know, is us being enslaved. They don't teach you about Mansa Musa being history's richest man, you know, or the Mali Empire and Timbuktu universities and medieval black castles in Zimbabwe, right? or the fact that the yes. pyramids were built by black, black people. people. They don't <laughs> teach you these things they, yes. <laughs> because they don't want you to know yes. that. Yes. That's because that's dangerous. And so I agree with what you said that education, you know, I think, um, and also something I spoke about was um, identifying and understanding our common enemy. You know what I'm saying? The same, you, when you start to draw the connections, like I'm Ghanaian, you know, so Ghana was the first nation first. to achieve independence. independence. And Kwame Nkrumah, Nkrumah. The president of Africa, as far as I'm concerned. The, he the president that, of Africa. He said that in Kwame and Nkrumah led us into independence. independence. Who takes Kwame Nkrumah out of power? The CIA. And this is the same CIA, mm -hmm. you know, that brought the crack into the community That's right. in 1979. It's the same structures. We got the same enemies, you know? We got our prisons over here. Mm -hmm. The people that own our prisons is a company called Geo Group. It's the biggest private prison group. And they also own prisons in Johannesburg. Yep. And then the Dutch <laughs> own oil fields in uh, Nigeria. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We battling the same people, we just don't realize. Okay. It's like, when you got the common enemy, then that makes you an ally. You know what I mean? Yes. 
I love this. I could be with you here all day. <laughs> I could be here with you all day, my brother. Okay, it's time for Talk the Talk now. And uh, Kaz, uh, I have Casanova, yeah. 500 from Pound 92. He's going to be joining us, yeah. okay? Honestly, I feel like he's speaking a conversation I can't have with a lot of people because thanks to Sheila O, my first time going to Africa was uh, the end of 2019. You came with me and the Megan Thee Stallion, Exactly. Right? Lagos, Lagos, Nigeria. Well. So, of course, i have never been to the motherland. I didn't know what to expect, but it's like, it was just, just hearing you speak about it, just, that's like super dope. I just, I just, I can listen to that all day, just like when I'm explaining to other people, like, why it's important, why you need to go, why you need to tap in and just get in touch with your roots. But, uh, I go on for days on that. <laughs> yeah. Back to hot topics. Right now, uh, the Grammys. Grammys. The Grammys is a big thing in the hot topics. I see is Afrobeats had a huge... Five. How many, Sheila? Five. Burner Boy picked up the global, uh, okay. the global album of the year. Right. Um, Tiwa Savage, Femi Kuti, mm -hmm. and um, Maddie Kuti contributors to Coldplay's um, um, Coldplay's uh, song. Yeah. So they got Grammys for that as well. Mm -hmm. Whiskey picked up uh, best music video with oh, his really? track with Beyonce. Dope. Yeah. You know, and everything else. Oh, it was those crazy. five. Oh, they ran five it Afrobeat artists. Picking up the gun. Hey, that's dope. It's massive. That's super dope. But you know what's crazy? Um, it seems like the hip hop community, we got like a love hate relationship with the Grammys. I got to keep it real. <laughs> and so, like, that, like, I think that's super dope. But I'm just curious, like, as an artist yourself, like, how important is that Grammy stamp? Is that something that's like on your bucket list as an artist or something you want? Or is it just like, yeah, it is what it is? It's definitely something I want. And I've always said I ain't gonna go till I have a real nomination. I mean, I was nominated before right. as a writer, but not for my, you know, being the primary artist. Um, I also think that you can't put too much weight into those accolades and the validation that comes from them. Right. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, Nas just got his first Grammy. Exactly. You know I mean? After 14 nominations. Now, listen, we can't, we can't ever act like Nas is not short list, top five, you know what I mean? And that's that's without the opinion involved. You right. can have an opinion that's otherwise, but when you talk about who's really yeah. the top five best of all time, you, you can't do that without Nas. And this is somebody who's just got their first Grammy. Um, so I feel like that speaks for itself. Yeah. So then it, it ain't gonna make or break your career, but it is what it is, because I know with that Grammy, that bag get a little heavier too, I would imagine. So I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I dig that. Um, Another thing I'm seeing by you being able to tap into, you know, your, your roots and being able to go back to Ghana and other places, like, how is that, and just reaching out and linking with other Afrobeat artists, how has that, like, helped or affected your creative process when it comes to recording music? You know, it's just something that's been on my mind, and I've been playing with the style. You know, I was just playing, playing Sheila, some, some joints that... I've been working on in the, in the Afrobeat space. Um, and she started this, you know. <laughs> you know, she put me together with Stone and, uh, and you know, really made me start to focus. Um, and I've been a fan of Afrobeat's music and I come up uh, listening to a lot of Afrobeats, like Fela, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and, and High Life, my, oh, my uncle, well High Life. yeah, my uncle, um, goes by the name of Chief Kofi Sami. He was a huge high life artist in his day in Ghana. Mm. So he actually, he brought Fela to Ghana for his final concert before he passed away. Mm. And Fela used to stay at my grandma's house and you know what I mean? That, that music runs deep with me, you know what I'm saying? But I'm really just now exploring making it. Are you enjoying it? Love it. You know, it's something, <laughs> I, some, something that I love about Afrobeats music is that it's it's so energetic, you know what I mean? It's like what the 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 most important piece of the music that I find is like is the melody and the feeling. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and that's what makes it so global. You know what I mean? Is that like you can not even know what somebody's saying, but you can really feel it beats. though. It's just spiritual. You, just you know what I mean? It's spiritual. It. Yeah. it is. It is. I want to talk about your your charity side. All right. I want to talk about you being an activist. 
I don't want to talk about your fearlessness because you're sleeping in the streets, Vic. I'm like, that's an African boy right there. <laughs> that's an African boy right there with all the money he has. He on the street. That is, he has the blood. You know, so I'm talking about Save Money, Save Life Foundation that you started and you created in your hometown, Chicago. And um, so what are your goals? Because I mean, you're doing daring things. You, you're speaking out for so much. What, what would you like to see happen with your foundation in the next five years? us take kids from Chicago to Ghana, like undoubtedly. Yes. Um, I have a program called Street Medics where we, we teach people how to like address gunshot wounds, people in the community, kids in school. I want to create an ambulance for us, a privatized ambulance fleet, you know, that operates, you know, I, I think we could have five of them, you know, one in like, you know, West Garfield Park, one in Englewood, you know what I mean? North Lawndale, like in the hot spots. Um, because the ambulance response times, that's really where we lose people. Um, so the, the privatized ambulance fleet is something that I've been thinking about for some years. And um, a mass employment campaign, you know, for summertime, like I just, I would love to see what Chicago looks like in the summertime if you got a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand more kids between the age of 14 and 24 with real summer jobs, jobs. where they making money. Yep. You know what I mean? Because that's, what we, what's the, that's, that's what's going on here is like when you start to compare communities with similar levels of unemployment across the racial barriers, you see similar levels of crime and violence. And it loves to be portrayed as if black people are just violent you know but but really it's like sustenance that the opportunities don't exist and that creates this culture that we live in you know what i mean so mass employment that's another idea i'm working on i like that okay there are two major issues happening right now in the world okay over here is the hate on asia you know of course blacks have been going through it now it's really really notorious now how they're coming out to uh Asian people, you know, so, uh, I want us to talk about that. I also want us to talk about in Africa, you know, the president of Ghana, I don't know if you know, uh, recently said that under his regime, he is never going to endorse gay marriages. Mm -hmm. So I want to know what your views are on these two topics, you know. So obviously being from a Western world in America where we're more open, you know, we see things differently, mm -hmm. you know, and Africa where they're very sheltered. And it's more of a cultural thing. So I want to just know what you think about that. So let's let's first start with Asia. You know, mm. what you think about what's going on out there. I mean, what's going on here? The hate. The hate against it's Asians sad. is disgusting, man. It, it's so upsetting. Um, America is just, you know, America's a crazy place. <laughs> and I did appreciate being outside of this motherfucker. <laughs> For a bit. <laughs> For a bit, right? Because if it ain't one thing, it's another, man. Um, and I'm... You know, I'm completely just in support and in solidarity with the Asian community because I realize it's like if they come for me in the morning, you know, they'll come for you at night. Yes, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like that. And um, it's it's another situation with a common enemy. You know, it's the same type of same type of dude that was shooting up those massage parlors that was shooting up the black church. You know what I mean? It's the same type of guy, same mentality. It's the same sickness. Um, and so. I think that uh, you know, we, we gotta we gotta stand up against it, and I'm, I'm on deck. You know, whatever whatever the movement needs from me. And it's yeah. been a problem. I think it, it really went crazy, like like at the beginning of the pandemic with the yeah. president. He put so much what heat. The fuck? You, know you know think it's gonna happen when you like you China, China virus? virus. Yeah. China yeah. virus. So you got you regular everyday. You got regular people in the community now. You they, mean the old president, the, though, yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. The ginger guy. Oh. Yeah, the orange dude. I don't really like to say his name, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he really put that battery in a lot of people's back. Oh, for sure. You see the white supremacy at an all time high when yeah. when uh, he does that. So I don't know if it's a level, level of entitlement, but at the end of the day, like he said, as far as common enemy, they, it's usually the homegrown Caucasian male. And they won't call them terrorists, terrorists, but they yeah. will not. So we're going to call the them terrorists, terrorists right now. We're going to call them we, what we they, call are. Them they are. And, 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 and they are because they like to get exactly. on there and be like, oh, he was having a bad Some type day. of mental issues. I know. You know. That, a bad, bad day. day. That I got a coming. pocket ticket outside my car. That's a bad day. <laughs> that's a bad day. <laughs> Taking like, a lot is on. not a bad day. As far as I'm concerned, guys, that's terrorism. And we're not going to stand for it. So please use your platforms, okay? Because we're saying no. 
no to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, no to it. So what about the gay marriage issue in Africa? What do you think about that? Okay. Basically, you know, you know, obviously, you know, gays are out there speaking. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. volume, you know, they're right, all right. of us, you know what I mean? But um, in, in the Western world over here, yeah. you know, it's normal. It's much more, yeah. It's more exactly. normal. But it's, in Africa, it's not as uh, controversial. The president, yes, the yeah. president of Ghana, he actually spoke up. And he said know, what? And he said that basically and never was, during his regime I, okay. as a christian he is never going to legalize gay mm. marriage so i want to know what you guys think about it yeah i think everybody should have their freedom you yeah. know I think so. that, that, that's all i that's all i stand for is people having their freedom to be who they are if they're not hurting somebody else you know i think that it's all a distraction like mm. what we really need to be focusing on um is who's exploiting us <laughs> you know what i mean True. like True. who's taking all the money True. like if, if Ghana's got the gold, who's still enslaving you know what I mean? us? If who's Ghana's got the gold, slave? who's yeah. getting all the money from? If Nigeria's got the oil, who's getting all the money? You know what so I mean? If the Congo's it. got the yeah. diamonds, like, why are our people still struggling, suffering, and hungry? You know what I'm saying? Everything, like, all those other interpersonal, yeah. it's a distraction. It's a distraction. No, I like that. I like that. Okay, let's come back to Chicago now. Okay, my final and last question. Afro Zones. The first and only Afrobeat show that's nationally syndicated, you know, it's been a struggle pushing Afrobeat music, you know. Now we have um, 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 piano music, we have all kinds of sounds <laughs> coming out of, we are fine now, we, we're not playing. Oh, we we first went with Afrobeat. <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> we, we were with Afrobeat, so we were like, okay. You know, at first we were called reggae. We're like, no, we're not reggae. Yeah. Then we're called dancehall, we're like, we're not dancehall. We're Afrobeat. So now we go Afrobeat and we're happy now, we're like, oh, I'm on piano. We got more beats coming out from the motherland. Mm -hmm. So on a serious note, this, so Afrozone is the only one doing this in the US and it's nationally syndicated on mainstream platforms because we won't even put our show on a platform that's not mainstream, period, the African way. You know, what more do you think we need to do, Vic, uh, for us to get Afro beats syndicated more and more embraced by the PDs in this radio station? Because we're winning Grammys now. Mm. What else do you think we need to do to push Afro beats in the US? Because it's big in the UK massive for sure I, I think it's just more collaboration you know and i've been seeing things change you know i mean the tide turn and you know friends of mine that would have never listened to music in another language you yeah. know what i mean like love their minds. tapping in and um and i think as the collaboration builds you know then the the avenue opens you know what i mean so we start to put our music out you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah, yeah, we got and to. we make those connections it's like it's inevitable right just like you say like you. that's why i like what you two said stood out to me like collaborations yes. and education yeah and i think it's dope because you both are really doing that and the way i think you're doing it is like a way that's really uh, a way to reach the masses and that's through the arts. Yes. If you notice like between music and sports that does a really good job of bringing cultures together. So what you're doing is providing a platform and you actually brought, you know, this sound over to, you know, the States where people yes. can tap in. He's actually an artist from the States that's going over and linking with the people, getting in tune with the culture. So that's all through and creating, um, you know, just relationships mm -hmm. and then educating yourself. That way you can educate others and then it's going to catch on. Yes. And then you can see like the wave already is, is going. It mm -hmm. didn't, they didn't win Grammys for nothing. Yep. It might be late in the States, but we, we've been seeing each week how the show progressed, sure. Afro Beats, you know what I mean, on the major market sure. to where it is now. Sure. From the first person, well, I remember when I saw Drake hop on it, I knew, oh yeah. <laughs> he the king of finding waves. <laughs> so I knew it might be on to something. And uh, what's that, three years later since then, it's been going crazy. And I think just keep doing what you're doing. I love yes. hearing him speak about like his trip love to the it, motherland. It, it's it. like super dope. It's informative. I can halfway relate to it. And I just think that's so dope that you tapped in and you explained to other people, other artists and everybody why they should do that. But not that's just that, what you were bringing back here to your community and vice versa. So I just yeah, want to know that again. Like, yo, y'all really, yep. what you're doing right now, this, this, this project right here, everything is mm -hmm. just keep doing that. Beautiful. And, that's just, and we need to do more concerts as well. Yeah. We need Word. to do more concerts here and we need to do more concerts over yeah. there. Yeah. You know, I, I worked with Jake Cole, you know, I mean, he's with you, right? On Rock Nation, isn't mm. he? And then he came out there and he said it was very spiritual for him to come out there and he was doing concerts and then he started doing free shows. 
Yeah, we gotta get paid. <laughs> 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 what well, he was doing, he, he was, you know, really caught up, you know, with the whole thing yeah. and stuff. So yes, it's just more collaborations and doing interviews like this, Vic. I have so much love and respect for you, bro. Likewise. And I just want you to keep doing what you're doing and using the platform you have to keep bridging the gap with the motherland and the Western world. You already know that, and Thank I appreciate you. you so much for everything that you're doing and you know, for helping me and playing such a big part in me embracing and becoming one with Africa. Thank you so much. Thank you. The end. <laughs> That's it guys, it's the Afrozone Show with your girl Sheila. Oh, I can't wait to hang out with you guys next week. Don't forget Afrozone's How Far with Sheila OS in over 44 African countries. Tell her how Prime far. Prime time, tell her how far. Prime time every Monday and every Friday, 10.30 p.m. GMT plus one. So just check your local listings because you know we're out there. It's Africa to the world. Let's get it. <laughs>